Hello all, four player squad gaming here, and this is our Final Fantasy XIV Dungeon Guard series. Born in magic, this magical city lived in splendour and died in agony. I welcome you to the lost city of Amdapur. This level 50 optional dungeon can be accessed after starting the quest One Night in Amdapur. And it is worth mentioning, at the time of recording, this duty will reward you with 40 tombstones of poetics upon completion. So without further ado, let's get into the guard. This is a linear dungeon that is easy to navigate through, and we start by killing the small groups of adds we encounter at the bottom of the stairs. We need to be mindful that near enough everything in this dungeon can poison you, and that a lot of the adds have AoE abilities to avoid. Amdapur probably wouldn't be a great place for people with allergies, as there seems to be a lot of pollen in the air too, and you will soon see the reason why. Once we arrive at the mould colony, it will begin to stir, and numerous tainted mould will spawn. We need to kill these early in the fight and then gain the enmity of the hectares and kill the mould colony. Like I've mentioned already, everything here can poison you and killing the tainted mould at a distance is advised as to not stack too many poison debuffs and giving your healer a heart attack. They may already be dealing with hay fever after all. Once this area is cleared, the gate will open and we can progress. Make your way through the abandoned city killing the small groups of ads you come across. Once you have cleared the two mad marks in front of the closed gate, it will open your way towards the first boss fight area. The treasure chests here can come alive and start attacking you, but let's be honest, that's not the weirdest thing we've seen so far. Our first boss is the Decaying Gourmand, and yes, that is a huge mouth across its stomach. We start this fight as normal with the tank gaining the enmity and walking through the boss to aim it away from the party. The Gourmand will use prey on a random party member and mark them. He will also use Mouldy Phlegm, a circular ground AoE that will cause damage, debuff and taint the area. This should be avoided. After a short while, the boss will use Devour and swallow the targeted player marked with Prey, and they will be unable to attack or move. The Voracious Maw will become targetable for the party, and damage will be switched to this immediately. Once destroyed, we free the trapped party member. The Gourmand will also use a large area burst called Spore Cloud, dealing low damage and inflicting poison. The fight then just repeats these mechanics. Make sure to free the trap party member when they are swallowed and pile on the damage to the Gourmand when you can. You will soon finish the boss. Guess he bit off a bit more than he can chew. Pick up your loot and progress. Kill the ads in your way and finish off the next mould colony, remembering to avoid the tainted mould as to not get too many stacks of poison. This will open the gate and allow you to continue. You will soon arrive at the next group of adds and notice the ground is tainted. The aim here is to gain the enmity of the adds and drag them off the tainted ground to kill them. Once they are killed, the area will clear and you can progress. Walking on this area will grant you a debuff and cause heavy poison damage. We should aim to avoid this. Clear the next group of adds to open the gate. Head towards the gate and you will notice two treasure coffers. One is real and one is a mimic. Do you feel lucky? Keep progressing and as before, drag the adds off the tainted area ahead and kill them. The next area is covered in tainted ground and the mould colony is the reason for this. Clear this as normal and the area will magically clean itself. Head through the now open gate and into the second boss fight area. Ariok is our second boss. The ranked Wamora is not the boss, just to make that clear. We need to kill the Wamora and ideally for the tank to do the final damage to it before it is killed. The ad will spray the player who killed it with scale flakes. The party member with the highest stack of scale flakes will be the target for the boss and will receive a body slam every time it flies into the air. Scale flakes will also cause the boss to deal more damage to that player, so the higher the stacks, the more damage will be dealt. The party needs to balance how many scale flakes the tank receives and how many Wormoras are left, as they will do frontal cone AoEs when left alone, and too many can cause your party issues. Ariok will also use Soundwave, an area-wide burst dealing low damage, and Corrosive Gale, a frontal pillar AoE that will then taint the ground. Avoid all the AoE and keep piling on the damage, ensuring the tank has the most stacks of scale flakes at any given time. Once killed, pick up your loot and progress into the next area. The Arrested Darkness is a harder part of this duty and brings many new add types. The White Mage Stones need to be killed in this area to allow us to damage the Balzaphon. The adds here can cause a lot of damage and it is recommended to kill the adds first and then the Mage Stones. Healers and tanks will be tested if this is not done correctly, enough so to cause a party wide. Progress forward, grab the treasure coffer and then head down to a secondary ad infested area. There are four mage stones here, it is very important to clear the adds first. Try to use all of your AoE abilities to burst the group down as fast as you can and clear the mage stones after. The tank will take a large amount of damage and the healer will need to be ready for this. 
Once this area has been cleared, head into the final boss fight area. Enjoy the short cutscene. Diabolos is the final boss of this dungeon, and he is a huge step up in difficulty from the previous bosses we have come across. Start the fight as normal with the tank gaining enmity and walking through the boss aiming it away from the party. You will have noticed diabolical gates around the fight area with symbols above each door. Each door will have a matching door and act as a pair. This mechanic is important for later in the fight. It is recommended for players to mark a pair of doors as when they close the symbols will also disappear. Diabolos has a frontal cleave that all but the tank should avoid, and the boss will use Gravel Ball, targeting a single party member and leaving a bomb behind. Avoid these bombs at all costs. Running into the bombs will cause burst damage and inflict you with the debuff heavy, making it harder to avoid Ultimate Terror and Ruinous Omen. Ultimate Terror is an area-wide ability, with safe zones at melee range and max range, so either collapse in on the boss when he starts to cast or run as far away as possible to avoid the damage, which is moderately high. Ruinous Omen has a long cast time. The party must open a pair of matching doors and go through the portal just before the timer ends. The damage from Ruinous Omen is huge, in most cases enough to wipe the party, and can only be dodged by teleporting from one door to another, avoiding the damage area. This mechanic can happen numerous times throughout the fight, so mark up your doors as necessary and use any movement enhancing abilities you have to get to those doors. Nightmare is an area wide that will inflict sleep on party members and is usually followed by Ultimate Terror. These mechanics will repeat and the party needs to keep up the damage on Diabolos. Use your DPS limit break to shorten this fight. If your memory game is strong and with some skill, Diabolos will be sent back into oblivion. And there you have it, the Lost City of Amdapur is complete. Remember to commemorate the player you believe deserves it most and pick up your loot. We give this dungeon a difficulty rating 3 out of 5 swords due to the final boss mechanics. Like, comment and subscribe. We are 4Player Squad Gaming, thanks for watching.